actors emerging that will be the new locus of power as we go into the future. And he's going to be uh, totally accurate about this because some of these new power structures that emerged will be corporations. In other words, corporations that will be, uh, arise that will be more powerful than nation states. Now, we're not at the point yet where there's a single global corp that runs everything, but we're definitely moving in that direction. I think everybody can see this when we look at the way that big food, for example, is being more and more consolidated under a couple you know, big agri companies. Uh, the drugs are being uh, consolidated under you know, a few mega pharmaceutical corporations. Media is being consolidated under a handful of mega media corporations. And that same trend will probably continue until we get corporations that may end up being more powerful than any existing nation state today. Now, that's a long way away, but it's definitely possible given where we're going. And so he says power over nations is uh, something that was considered uh, beneficial in the, the older order. Now, power over the outcomes of events is considered more uh, important. And that's because of the rise of new actors that we've never seen before, and that is the international corporate structure. He says this is creating a more and more in interdependent world, and that's what monopoly capitalism intended on creating with completely open borders, completely free trade. This was to create and erect this totally interlinked global economy. Don't go anywhere. This is the Alex I'm your guest host, Jay Dyer, as we break down soft power from the elite themselves. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. This is your guest host, Jay Dyer of Jay's Analysis. As you know, uh, I weekly lecture through the writings of the global elite to give you a inside understanding directly from their really boring long tomes and texts. I do your homework for you. Nobody else wants to read these books. Hardly anybody but the global elite actually read these books, and then I read them. So then I can digest it and tell you exactly what the plans are. And it's always important to look back at the plans that they wrote 150, 30 years ago. And today I want to uh, highlight an important paper that was written in terms of international relations and American geopolitical strategy, and it's called Soft Power by Joseph Nye Jr. He is, of course, one of the Kennedy School of Government Harvard Rhodes Scholarship guys. So we know he's uh, coming out of the circles of Oxford University. Uh, this will be uh, essentially people promoting the Rhodes, Milner, Rothschild, et cetera, worldview. Because typically people uh, on the Eastern Seaboard elite universities, Harvard, Yale, uh, Cambridge, or excuse me, uh, Princeton, and then you know they go over to Oxford and Cambridge in the UK, they get sort of uh, co-opted into or sort of coaxed into the uh, two fake arms of the establishment at a higher geopolitical level. So just like in the US, we have the fake left-right Democrat-Republican uh, idea. In terms of global geopolitics, there's a similar kind of dialectic between older strategies of Fabian socialism that was so-called liberal uh, elitism in the UK, and then a more right-wing uh, supposed opposition to that. But in actual fact, the uh, elites above that were funding both sides of the false left-right dialectic in the UK as well. These international elite are also allied with the internationalists from, uh, the, from the American power structure, and this would, of course, be the J.P. Morgans, the the Rockefeller power structure, et cetera. And so out of this sphere, we get a lot of people who are ideologues and who are the brains, right? Not so much the, we got the banks, we got the corporations, and we got the brains. And the brains would be the people like the Brzezinski's and the Kissinger's. And we could count uh, Joseph Nye in this uh, category of global elite writers. And so he wrote, uh, he was actually listed by Foreign Policy Magazine in 2011 as one of the top global thinkers in the world. And why is that? Well, he wrote this famous paper right after the, the Cold War was winding down in 1990. It's called Soft Power. Soft Power is important because it's one of the key strategies that the elite have used for a long time. It's really a, a, a Fabian socialist strategy, but it does, it's not restricted to people of that ideology. It can be used by anybody, and it's really crucial to understand because it's part of cultural warfare. You know, I've talked for a long time about how toxic culture and culture warfare is crucial to how the agenda marches forward despite whoever's in uh, public office. And that's because the agenda is planned at a higher level by think tanks, NGOs, and international corporations and organizations. This is admitted in this essay. So you understand that this is not a conspiracy text. This is a text from people in 
the Harvard circles. Harvard had a huge role, for example, in the looting of Russia uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed. You had a lot of oligarchs who then sort of auctioned off in a fire sale a lot of the uh, assets of Russia when the Soviet Union collapsed. And that was all done by design. And some of the architects of that were uh, at Harvard University. So what does he mean by soft power? Why is this so crucial to understanding how the global elite work? Well, he's uh, <clears throat> uh, surprisingly at the time uh, uh, when he wrote this in 1990, you would think he would be writing about the Soviet Union declining. But in fact, he, he writes about the United States in decline. And that's because the Cold War really had this strat this this uh, end game that was long term in terms of the global government. A lot of people think that the Cold War was just about uh, defeating evil atheism and communism, but actually it was about a long term game that some of the higher level strategists had for bringing about the marriage of East and West into a third way, or what the Fabians called. Uh, the New World Order. Yes, actually, that term, the New World Order, was coined by famous Fabians like H.G. Wells. Now, again, Fabian so, uh, economics doesn't restrict itself to somebody who's an outright Marxist socialist, because as we know from a lot of the writings that I've covered, including uh, Quigley, Professor Anthony Sutton, or Johan Ratzio that I recently have been lecturing through in his uh, uh, really copiously footnoted books, uh, we know that the the, uh, the the game plan for Fabian socialists for an international order is identical to the game plan for the monopoly capitalist international order. And that's because Fabian socialism, slow kill Marxism, in other words, had the exact same stra uh, funding uh, as the people who are pushing monopoly capitalism control. So in other words, it's the same ideology. They might differ at times on how to get there, but it's the same end goal. And essentially, this is going to be admitted and demonstrated in Nye's own essay. He doesn't mention Fabianism, but he doesn't have to because it's all the same plan. It's all the plan for a world order structured around a global currency, a global government, and uh, the removal of the existing nation state firewall and the removal of the existing currencies that will put us into this debt based international credit system, something like Fed coins, something like CBDC, whatever, wherever it goes, we don't know yet. But they're already now beginning to talk about the very things that these people said 100 years ago. Remember, Bertrand Russell talking about the credit system. H.G. Wells talking about the credit system, the universal basic income system that would be rolled out. And here we are 100 years later, and it's being rolled out. <clears throat> Nye says that really the breakdown of the existing order after uh, the, the Renaissance uh, is, is, is due to the world wars of the 20th century. This is, a, is the same analysis that Quigley has, that World War I, II, and the Cold War really break down all of the previous existing international orders. And this includes the notion of traditional warfare breaking down. So this is <clears throat> warfare that, that is exercised primarily through uh, external power or through actual force is being replaced by a multipolar supposed order that will uh, be centered around what he calls soft power. That is influencing nations and, and uh, uh, power blocks through non-warfare means, non, uh, uh, you know, not actual warfare, but through culture, for example. So he says that uh, the Cold War saw not just the decline of the U.S., but also the decline of Russia as well. And he says that there are new actors emerging that will be the new locus of power as we go into the future. And he's going to be uh, totally accurate about this because some of these new power structures that emerged will be corporations. In other words, corporations that will be, uh, arise that will be more powerful than nation state. Now, we're not at the point yet where there's a single global corp that runs everything, but we're definitely moving in that direction. I think everybody can see this when we look at the way that Big food, for example, is being more and more consolidated under a couple, you know, big agri companies. Uh, the drugs are being uh, consolidated under, you know, a few mega pharmaceutical corporations. Media is being consolidated under a handful of mega media corporations. And that same trend will probably continue until we get corporations that may end up being more powerful than any existing nation state today. Now, that's a long way away, but it's definitely possible given where we're going. And so he says power over nations is uh, something that was considered uh, beneficial in the, the older order. Now power over the outcomes of events is considered more uh, important. And that's because of the rise of new actors 
that we've never seen before, and that is the international corporate structure. He says this is creating a more and more in interdependent world, and that's what monopoly capitalism intended on creating with completely open borders, completely free trade. This was to create and erect this totally interlinked global economy. Don't go anywhere. This is the out. I'm showing your guest host, Jay Dyer, as we break down soft power from the elite themselves. Welcome back to the so we are breaking down the uh, crucial geopolitical essay, which is now a little bit dated, but it's very important to understand in terms of getting how we got to where we are now. This is the 1990 essay by Joseph Nye called Soft Power. He talks about how the world was constructed into an interdependent uh, uh, free market in the sense of free trade global order. Right? I'm not talking about legitimate free market capitalism, I'm talking about monopoly capitalism that engineers ways to construct an international global order for the benefit of a choice elect or choice select small percentage of oligarchs. That's the real world that we're living in now. And it's totally compatible with the Fabian socialist model of collectivism. If you remember in 1984, when Winston uh, is is looking into the counter uh, the, the, the movement that he thinks is against the establishment, right? Goldstein, and he thinks that Goldstein has written this book, The Theory and Practice of Oligarchical Collectivism, and how you fight against this and how you, you know, beat the establishment. In reality, we find out that there was no Goldstein. He was a completely made up creature, uh, a cutout, a kind of a, a bin Laden type of character. And in reality, the writing was actually written by O'Brien. Right? The theory and practice of oligarchical collectivism and how to defeat it, whatever. The revolutionary propaganda was created by the guy running the Big Brother system. And this is in Orwell's uh, novel, intentionally meant to uh, characterize Fabian socialism. He is writing about Bernard Shaw, Lord Milner, and all of the Fabian elites that were pushing and, and moving Britain into a slow version of socialism, which is almost completely where they've gone now. They've almost completely adopted a kind of uh, Fabian model, and this is not even hidden anymore. In fact, they've had many, uh, you know, Tony Blair, for example, was an open uh, supporter of the Fabian Society. And that doesn't mean that their fake right-wing uh, opponents are actually against Fabianism. They're actually part of the same uh, supra-international structure, which is allied with zillion, zillion, zillion dollar mega, mega, mega capitalism. Um, that's the reality of the world. And when you read these kinds of books, you start to figure that out. And these writings by, for example, Nye. So Nye goes back to the uh, how we got to where we were in his day in the 90s by talking about the 70s and the 80s and how um, international corporations were really coming into, uh, into power, into focus by um, taking over various markets. And he talks about how one of the things that we saw at this time period was economic warfare. Economic warfare be, be, became uh, became a, a key element in the global elite's uh, uh, attack on other countries, and he says that international agencies then stepped up to be engaged in this economic warfare, kind of a predecessor to cybersecurity at this time. And he says the, these international agencies became elements, and corporations became elements of soft power. Power shifted. Uh, away from the balance of powers in the Cold War to this new uh, structure where there's an interdependence in the whole world, which was the purpose of the Cold War, was to create this interdependent um, neoliberal order that could then transition into a new phase, which will become the War on Terror, and that will become where we are now, this new type of war. Isn't it convenient the War on Terror just kind of went away? Does nobody question why it is that uh, the terrorists just suddenly stopped being terrorists? Are we supposed to actually believe that that was because Obama and Joe Biden defeated the terrorists and defeated al-Qaeda and ISIS and all this nonsense, right? That, that's, those are all cut out puppets, in my view, that the West actually runs anyway. And he hints at that in this, in this essay. He hints, he hints that, you know, if you think about the war on terror, you know, this was basically um, the holdovers from Brzezinski's Mujahideen allies, right? The so the Sino the, the Soviet war in Afghanistan. This was Brzezinski's uh, secret uh, base, as it was called, which is really just the 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 uh, names of those who were in Al Qaeda. 
that becomes the the locus of the war on terror and the supposed baddies once again. But this interdependent order really was itself managed at the higher levels on the basis of private banks and massive debt. And so if you remember back in the 2008 uh, crisis, a lot of writers were talking, Peter Schiff, Tom Woods, people out of the, you know, Austria, uh, the Austrian School of Economics and the people who are more libertarian minded were actually, and they, a lot of them were correct about how this was all scams and, and debt bubbles within debt bubbles within debt bubbles. And this was all done by design. So you have to understand that they will run up debt on purpose to destroy and tank the economy as a way to siphon off people's energy, right? Because money, in my view, is really just a symbol for energy over time and how to store energy. And so they will siphon off people's energy uh, and put the nation into uh, insurmountable debt on purpose. This is an actual strategy to destroy the existing system. And there's, it goes by a lot of different names. There's a lot of different theorists, Plower, uh, Plower and Piven that Alex talks about a lot. But also this, the, the Fabians had this idea too of um, promoting anything that runs up uh, debt and outlandish taxes. Because what this does is this supposedly will disrupt the corporate, in their view, the capitalist system. Now, it's not actually disrupting capitalism. It's really just fostering monopoly capitalism's oligarchical designs as they're allied with Marxist socialist collectivism. So he now goes on to say that debt and the, and the private banks are really the key to the new power structure and the corporations as well. And he says that actual warfare is uh, very, very costly. So we don't really need to engage in a whole lot of actual warfare anymore. He says that now we're going into an age where we're gonna be uh, involved in ideological war warfare and soft power. Now, it's true that we can still have real war, right? Obviously, the, the possibility of real war can break out. Uh, but what he's describing is the next several decades, right, where we didn't have, other than the war on terror, which was more of an ideological war, right? There wasn't a whole lot of, I mean, there was conflicts in Persian Gulf. There were conflicts in, uh, you know, areas like Syria. But we haven't seen a full-on global war on terror the way that we saw World War II or something like that. So the Cold War, which was much more of an ideological um, managed conflict, is the was the model for the kinds of warfare that we're in now, right? This, these uh, managed ideological conflicts, which are mass examples of soft power. The interconnectedness of communications, which was built as a result of the Cold War, is what will put us into a situation of an already existing proto-global government. These are the same people, again, who were the architects of the League of Nations, which gave way to the United Nations, which is going to give away to, you know, or it, it may become the, the future world government. Who knows? Um, but that's always, by the way, what the Fabian Socialists themselves pushed. They wanted, they were behind the League of Nations and the United Nations explicitly, openly. This was all uh, at the behest of Lord Milner, the Astors, and other people who, according to Quigley and the people that we talk about, literally bankrolled and funded and promoted all this through the Ivy League elite ins institutions and universities on the Eastern Seaboard and in the UK. And so you'll notice uh, uh, Professor Nye went and studied uh, under these institutions and has this uh, approach to geopolitics. He goes on to say that the real future will be private power and not public government power. Governments essentially are going to be more or less owned by the private corporate powers. He says that uh, in 1953, uh, uh, he says you can see an example of this kind of strategy through the uh, CIA's uh, uh, ousting of uh, Mossadegh to install the Shah. And by the way, this is interesting because that wasn't yet declassified as an actual CIA operation uh, at the time that uh, Nye wrote this. But of course, he assumes that people reading his writings already know this. So something that was called a conspiracy theory, you know, all the way up until not too many years ago was a kind of common knowledge amongst people writing at this level is what, what we should pay attention to here. He goes on to say, well, what are the, the dangers that we'll see as we come out of the Cold War and enter into this new phase? He says, we're going to see rogue states, uh, international uh, actors that are uh, rogue, so-called. We don't really know what that is. Basically, that's just anybody that's not involved in their debt-based banking scam. That's a quote, rogue nation or a rogue individual. And I think we're seeing that now with the, the attitude of the West towards 
uh, towards Russia, for example, that would be considered a rogue act or rogue state. And he says that the international corporate world will have to put in place structures that are international to combat these rogue actors. Welcome back to the uh, I'm your guest host, Jay Dyer. You know, I was just uh, thinking about the products that I really enjoyed from the store. I want to remind you that it's absolutely necessary to support Alex and the store and everybody over to by going to the store and loading up on those those uh, products right now. For example, the uh, the nascent iodine. I've been taking that uh, every morning for the last uh, I don't know about two weeks, and uh, you will immediately feel energized. Like there's like this this numbness, like this, this, you, you get this, uh, my, my, my lips get numb in a good way. Uh, and then I'm like super energized for the next four hours. So uh, I don't know what <laughs> the nascent iodine actually is doing to me, but it's definitely making me, uh, it feels like, I don't know, some sort of weird superpower that is coursing through my veins. And I guarantee you, you're, you're going to love it. If you get into that. Also, I'm a big fan of the coral calcium. Um, that's, that's one of our favorites here. Jamie likes it too. Um, so definitely get over there. Uh, there's a lot of books over there, too, that are great. A lot of DVDs, a lot of uh, excellent T-shirts. So definitely support the empire. It's crucial. We don't want this going away. This is really having a huge effect. And just to give you an example, um, let's uh, if we can play this clip of a, uh, a Dutch politician uh, very recently laying down the Chad law uh, <laughs> with a bunch of globalist goons. I couldn't believe this when I saw it. Um, it, it if you can't. Uh, see the clip. If you can't see the clip, uh, it's got a, I think, dubbed below it. There's because he's speaking in Dutch. Obviously, I don't know Dutch, but um, this is a YouTube clip. You guys have that. Hele generaties Europeanen werden zodoende onderwezen door Marxisten, of ze nu pro-Sovjet of pro-Mao waren. Een goed voorbeeld is St. Anthony's College in Oxford, waar Sigrid Kaag haar M. And he mentions the Sigrid Kaag. Some woman who's a uh, Dutch politician. He says that this was a tool for uh, Western secret societies or uh, secret services, I should say, recruiting people into the global elite. And then uh, the rest of the, uh, uh, the boss bitch women say, don't say this, don't talk about that. Baseless conspiracy theory. Well, it's not, it's a fact. So you notice that even politicians are figuring out the stuff that we talk about here. Uh, and this guy, total chat who just doesn't care, charges forward with pointing out how the secret intelligence service recruits people into the global elite structure from these universities. And what do they do? Do they refute him? No, they get up and walk out. So uh, you know, if, you're, if you're not involved in this, why are you acting guilty? Why are you getting up and walking out <laughs> with all of her goon politicians with her? Right? And then he just keeps on total chat energy. Uh, not even a conspiracy theory. We know that this is a criminal ideology set that is taught at these Western universities. And it's the same ideology that birthed the revolutions of the communists. And now it's morphed into cultural Marxism, which he's completely correct about and modern. And then the, the whole group, they just all walk out. The whole cabinet gets up and walks out and he calls them out. <laughs> and he says, well, it's not an accident that she went and studied at Oxford and came back basically a Fabian socialist. This is everything that I've been telling you. And he says she was recruited for this international deep state. So politicians the world over are beginning to figure this out. And it's the very thing that, as we're going to uh, uh, close here with the rest of Nye, the very thing that Nye talked about at the global policy level. None of this is conspiracy. It's only conspiracy to get you to not think about it or talk about it. That's just to keep the normies and, and the dumbed down people from actually rubbing their two brain cells together and figuring out, hey, wait a minute, we're being scammed at an international level. It's not the libs. It's an international oligarchic zillionaire elite. In fact, Nye goes on to say that the new threat, he's talking about the future world rogue states and what? Global warming. So he goes immediately to the global warming scam. That will be the new international threat, he says. International institutions, he says, must now uh, come up to the stage, the international stage, which because they must ex-world control 
for the information age that is emerging. He was writing this in 1990, predicting the information age. The international institutions, he says, must step to the fore. Remember, he mentioned cybersecurity. So he's basically predicting cyber uh, uh, censoring back in 1990. And he says that as debt increases amongst the debt, debts increase, talking about the debt bubble, as the international institutions step to the fore, he says that as debt comes about and crashes the economies, he says what will be the focus is culture war. He says culture war. He says psychological operations will be crucial, right, in controlling this new global order. He says that it will be a battle of worldviews in the information age, info war, as Alex uh, accurately titled his his site uh, many many years ago. Again, fits perfectly with what Nye is talking about. He says that we're going to have to have these new institutions that will police the world, and he says that the U.S. empire will face a uh, a choice just like the British Empire faced in the 19th century, right? When it was coming and beginning to wane, now the U.S. Empire will begin to wane. And what will step into the place if the U.S. Empire declines and collapses? Well, he says we're going to need an international body that steps up, something like the United Nations. And he says, how will they exercise and bring about this new global culture? UNESCO, United Nations Educational social cultural organization, which as we know, the philosophy of UNESCO was written by Julian Huxley, a book that we've lectured through the entire text here on Alex's uh, program and also over on my channel and on my Rockfin. We've gone through all of these texts again, and we're doing another new one today that just backs up everything. How will this be brought about? Well, what means will UNESCO use to bring about a global culture that will destroy the existing cultures and move everybody into a global culture? TV shows, Hollywood, he says, will promote and create a global culture. That global culture will be the basis for the new international order. By the way, this is the exact same thing that the Fabians and the socialists said would occur 100 years prior to Nye writing this, right? They said, Shaw and others said, Bernard Shaw and others said, Milner, these people said in the 19 teens, 20s, and 30s that debased, degenerate global sex culture, for example, not just that, but all kinds of other things, would be the basis for the new global order. They said that in the 20s and 30s. They were talking about the free love in the teens, 20s, and 30s, the Fabian socialists, way ahead of the time. And then we get this really crazy statement at the end of Nye's essay where he says, well, how are, how are we going to uh, uh, combat this? Uh, he says that the nations as they are, the U.S., need to spend <laughs> exorbitant amounts of money, spend, spend, spend. In other words, quantitative easing, the money printer go, brr, 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 right? Make the money printer go, brr. And then he says, uh, introduce tons of new taxes. So more debt and more taxes are the answer? Well, why would that be the answer? Well, that's the answer if you have the design of destroying the existing system to bring in the new Great Reset global system. And he says that the post-Cold War era will bring about the new world order. The new challenges of the transnational interdependence, he says, will emerge out of the Cold War, which was a managed dialect. I, I made a, a video, a music, it's my new single, I just dropped my new single, uh, where I'm mocking the soy culture, the very soft power, literally soft power soy culture that we have uh, promoted by the elites. And I don't know if you have that. It's my Funko Pop song, if you want to play that. It's, it's a banger. It's going to be number one on the Billboard charts. So uh, is that acceptable? Funko Pop, whoa. we go 
graduated Conjoined in a subway shop Whoa. I am married I am married to my folk over We got joined Co-whites in a subway shop Whoa. Vitamins and biscuits and minerals They come to me to chew My whole life is spent Watching on a tube Dude. 